Hey, welcome to Growth Track step number two. And uh, let me just go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Lord God, uh, thank you for the people that have tuned in to go through uh, Growth Tracks uh, step number two. And we pray that this would be a great time of discovery and, and how we can each use our gifts to glorify you and to grow your, your church and your kingdom. Uh, guide us at, at this time, Lord. And uh, thank you for each person. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So we're going to go to go through growth tracks, step number two. And this is really discovering your gifts, um, who you are, how, how God has uniquely created you. So if, if you have your document, go ahead and, and open that up. And I'm going to put one up on, on the screen here so that we're, we're looking at the same thing. I have a document that, that looks a lot like this. Uh, says growth tracks step number two and if if you've stapled it together um, you might want to unstaple it because we're gonna we're gonna look through this and and you're gonna read some things and you're gonna write down on one of the other sheets of paper uh, so so if it's unstapled that's that's the best way to go um, let's see here step number two discovering your gifts and Ephesians 4. 11 through 12 says this, now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, pastors, and teachers, and their responsibility is to equip God's people to do the work and to build up the church, the body of Christ. So one of the things that we're looking at here is God has gifted us uniquely. And, and you may ask, okay, what's the most important gift? I don't think there is such a thing. The reality is, is that we need different gifts. God has designed you uniquely, has designed me uniquely, so that together, as the body of Christ, um, we, we can do the work that God has called us to, uh, to, to reach people with the gospel, to, to share the hope of that gospel. Um, and what are my gifts based on? All my gifts are... are um, Sometimes my my passion, um, what, what am I passionate about? In Romans 12, 6 through 8, it says we have different gifts according to the grace God has given you. If a man's gifting is in prophecy, let him use it to the proportion of his faith. If it's serving, let him serve. If it's teaching, let him teach. If it's encouraging, let him encourage. And if it's contributing to the needs of let him give generously. If it's leadership, let him govern diligently. If it's showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. So, so God has put certain gifts and, and passions in you. You know, you may be passionate about women's ministry or men's ministry or, or, or children. You may be passionate about, about leading or, or teaching. Um, and that's something that God has placed in you. Uh, sometimes there's life experience. Um, you, you've you've had something happen in your life or maybe through through training um, God, God takes you those things through those things uh, Romans 12 1 in the in the message says this so here's what I want you to do God helping you take take your everyday ordinary life you're sleeping you're eating you're going to work you're waking you're walking around life and place it before God as an offering, embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. So you, so you take those life experiences. Maybe you're an accountant. Um, you use those gifts uh, for his glory. Um, whatever training you have, your life experiences, those are going to shape you. Uh, the third one, an, an interesting one, and sometimes we overlook my pain. Uh, some of you may have been through a really difficult circumstance and that might be why you have a passion for children uh it may be a passion um for for the for the pain and suffering of others that that came out of out of your own pain i, I know for for myself i struggled early on in christianity and there's some pain in that and in some ways god has used that in my life to help others understand god's word and live a victorious Christian life. Second Corinthians uh, 1, 3, and 4 says this, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us with the, 
with our troubles so that we can comfort others. When we are troubled, we are able to give them the same comfort God has given us. So God has done something in your life and, and he's brought you through that victoriously. And, and now you can go out and share hope with others and, and you can confidently say, look, there is light at the end of the tunnel. I've, I've been where you're at. Um, so here, here's a couple things we, we want to do. We understand here through Psalm 139 that God has uniquely designed you. It's, his word says, you made me. You, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for make, making me so, so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. So, so God has designed you uniquely. He has a plan. He has a purpose for your life. And, and so what we want to do is we want to discover our gifts. We want to develop those. And then we want to use those gifts for his glory. It says here, my, my purpose is to serve God by serving others. How do I, how do I love God? I, I love other people. So, so we're going to take this uh, personality assessment. And you're, you're going to have a, a series of questions. And it's one of those where you circle the number that best describes you. Um, is this me or is it, is it not me? And it's, it's a one through four. And this is called a DISC personality test. Uh, this is a test that I had to take years ago when I uh, went, in, went into church planting. And uh, if, if you pull out the paper, um, in this first one, that would be a D. The next box is an I. There's an S and a, and a C uh, personality. And and just go through. And so in this first, first one, let's just walk through that first one. I'm assertive, demanding, and decisive. Um, if, if you're... If you're like, yep, that's me, then, then um, you circle, circle that number five. Um, if, if you're debating it forever, um, it's probably rarely or never. Um, I enjoy doing multiple tasks. So are you a one? Are you a five? Are you somewhere in between? Put that through. I can think about tasks more than others or myself. Uh, circle that. And then um, and go all the way through. And what you're going to do is you're going to put a total number up here. So if I do... Do all fives all the way here. So it's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So I'm going to score a 25 right in here under D. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with I, um, with, with the S, and the C. And then, and then here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to total those up. And, and then I, what, I, what I want to do is I want to take my highest number. Let's say I get 25 on I and 20 on, on D. And then let's say these lower ones, this uh, C and this, this S, you know, maybe I get a 16 or a 10. Well, pick, pick your highest number. And, and if you have a high number and you don't have anything that are close, then then you're probably that one. So let's say if I get a 25 on an I and a 12, 11, and a 10, I'm probably an I. And so, so what I want, want us to do, and this, these aren't good, these aren't bad. Um, this just describes your style of leadership. How do, how do you lead at, at a task? And um, here, here's what we'll do. We'll go through that, and, and I'll just tell you, when, when I did this, I scored, I am I am an I, predominantly I, with, with a D. Uh, Pastor Zeff, when he's taking this test, he is a pr predominantly D with, with an I. Um, when Barb does this, she is a, a CS. So here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll go through and I'll look through. And this is a good thing to do with somebody else. Um, and if, and if you're not going through this at a certain time, just, just kind of read it and, and ask somebody else, say, okay, does this, does this adequately, adequately describe me? Is this who I am? So let's, let's look at this DI. This would be Pastor Zaff. Uh, we're curious uh, concluders who place emphasis on the bottom line and work hard to reach our goals. We're, 
more determined than we are inspirational, yet our high expectations and standards for ourselves and those around us typically cause us to make quite an impact, motivating others to follow us. So Zeph's one of those guys who you say, I don't know if it can be done. He's going to go out and get after it and, and show you that it can be done. That's, that's um, what a D or DI uh, personality does. We have an array of interests and can sometimes be distracted by taking on too many projects. We often need to, to focus um, and prioritize and simply slow down. Um, because we thrive on activity and forward motion, we like to accomplish tasks through large numbers of people. And then there's some examples like Joshua, Noah, Sarah. So in each one of these, you're going to read, and, and there's some strengths and, and weaknesses. And, and this is uh, not good or bad. It's, it's who you are. And the reality is, is we need all of these different personalities uh, types and leadership styles with, within the church. So I'll read mine. I'm an, an IB. We're persuaders who are outgoing and energetic. That's, that's how I lead. Um, the DI typically will say, look, here's how you do it. This is what I want. The, the ID more, more will will go out after the task and say, okay, come along, follow me. I, I, just, I showed you how to do that. So, so we inspire people in, in, our, in our leadership. We enjoy large groups and use our power and influence to attain respect and convince people to follow our lead. Sometimes we can be viewed as fidgety and nervous uh, because, but it comes from our need to be a part of challenges that have a variety of freedom and mobility. We could benefit from learning to look before we leap and spending more time being studious and still. We make inspiring leaders and know how to get results from and through people. So some examples of this would be John the Baptist, uh, Peter, and, and Rebecca. So, so these, these um, the first two types of leadership that I talked about are, are, are very big picture people, and we need big picture people. But we also need detail people. And so some of you detail people uh, would, would be under this, these other ones, like, uh, let me see. Okay, a CS. Um, it's, it's great that we have big vision people, but we need this person here. CS is we are systematic and stable. We tend to do one thing at a time and we do it right. We're reserved, we're cautious. So sometimes you may say, well, this person's not paying attention to me. Well, they're reserved and, and they're cautious. Um, so, so it's good to, to understand different, different personality types, and we may be reading that person wrong. Um, this says we'd rather work behind the scenes. We stay on track. How, how we seldom take risk and, and, or try new things, and we naturally dislike sudden changes in our environment. So sometimes you'll you'll see that within an organization or a church where, but this person um, they're not rebellious, they're more kind of okay. Give me some more facts. I mean, let me understand this before we jump in. Where where the DI and the ID says, yeah, let's go, let's go after it, let's get it. This person says, okay, I need I need facts. Um, put this out. I'm, I, I don't I don't want to hold this up, but I need the information. It says they are. Uh, Precisionist to the letter, we painstakingly require accuracy, accuracy and, and fear criticism, which we equate to failure. We're diligent workers. Our motivation comes from serving others. And some examples are Esther, Zechariah, and Joseph. So what I recommend is, is take, take the test. You can even pause the video, take the test, go through and, 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 and read through, and then just describe. Say, say okay, is that, is that me? And, and may, maybe your numbers are a little bit off where you think you're a, you're a CS based on the numbers and um, go ahead and reverse them. Go, go up and, and say, okay, what is, um, what does the SC say? And then, and look and go, okay, may, you know, maybe that's a little bit more because sometimes you read this and, you know, there's, there's only five, five questions there and um, could be de depending on how you're feeling that day. So, um, Make the, the most of your personality. 
Uh, the Bible says we are his workmanship. We are created in Christ Jesus for good works. God has designed you to do, to do good works. Um, and, and knowing your strength or, and knowing your personality is, is important because as, as we go through, and as I already said, there are strengths and weaknesses with every personality. So let's just look at the, uh, the D type personality. This says you're dominant, you're directed, you're direct, you're task oriented, you're decisive, organized, outgoing, and outspoken. Um, and and sometimes you know some people may may find that to be negative, but but we need each one of these personalities. We we need that that one person uh, that's gonna that's gonna organize, that's gonna say, okay, let's go forward. Here's the direction we need to go into. But if you're that personality, you also have to take um, into consideration these other personalities and also know um, what could be your weakness. And, and this says for the, for the D-type personality is you need to listen attentively to others. You need to support, support others on the team. You know, because the D person, they're, they're ready to go. Um, but, but they need to support others. They need to invest in, in personal relationships. Uh, that the project may not actually be the most important thing. The most important thing may may be the, the growth of the team members in that uh, project. We, ne we need to uh, remember that 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 it's people um, over project. Not that the project isn't important, and not that we don't need to get it done. But but the D type personality needs to remember that that relationships really matter. Uh, balance controlling and domineering tendencies, value the opinions, feelings, and desires of others. So, so kind of go through and 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 read uh, on your personality and and um, you know what what God wants you to look at. So, the second test in Growth Track Two is a spiritual assessment or spiritual gift assessment, and um, this is where you're you're going to want to take this apart because you're going to. Your page will, will be blank, but it'll look up a little bit like this. And, and this is one of those things where where you're going to go through and you're going to look at and you're going to say, okay, almost never, sometimes, and almost always. And you're going to give yourself a one, two, or a three on each question. And then you're going to add those up and uh, give yourself a number. And, and then we have a list of, of what each one of those gifts are. So like in the first one, if I put a one in each one, my total number for that is going to be three. And that's probably, that's not a spiritual gift of, of mine. That's as low as you can get. Uh, when I when I summed up the music one, I got, I got a three on that. Music is not my spiritual gift. And there's some additional instructions about uh, what I said. But, but here's, here's what I want you to do, and, and here, here they are. Here's the questions. Um, you know, you add, add those up. You know, I like organizing services and events. If, you're, if you look at that and go, yeah, I love doing that, that means you're, you're a three. Um, so so you, you give, that, give that a three in the, in the box. Um, with, with all the numbers. Don't, don't put it on this page. You're going to put it on the next. So there's a whole list of questions. Go through each one. And the sheet that you're going to put it on it is here. And then you're going to, you're going to add them up across. And so, so on that first one, let's say I put one all the way across. This is where I would put three. And then here's what I'm, where I'm going to fill in the name of the uh, gift. We didn't put the gifts in because we don't, we don't want people to make decisions based on what gift they think they have, but, but based on the, the decision. So it's one, two, or three each time. You add those up, um, put, in, put in the gifts. So that first one was administration, and we just go down. Administration, apostleship, craftsmanship. Um, and, and then just kind of read through and, and, and talk with somebody else, like, like I said with the other one, where you say, okay, is this me? And, and sometimes there, there might be some surprises. Uh, and, and I think even if, if I told you like, like my gifts, say, um, I'll tell you what, what one of my top gifts 
um, actually I don't have a gift with a higher score than this, is, is apostleship. And, and in fact, when I, when I go through, um, where one of them is P Pastor Shepherd, that's not one of my top four gifts. I, I got a high score in that, but here's my primary gifting right here. It's apostleship. It says the gift of apostleship is a divine strength or ability to pioneer new churches and ministries, ministries through planting, overseeing, and training. So, so this is an area where, where God has uh, uniquely gift, gifted me. Um, he's given me a passion for. And so you can go through and, and as you add those up, some of those are going to be obvious. Craftsmanship, you probably already knew that you had that gift if, if this one comes up. Uh, discernment, evangelism. Now, now, who do you think on our staff scored really high there on evangelism? Now, I, I got a decent score on this, um, but I don't have the gift of, of evangelism. I, I do what the text says, um, that, that I do the work of an evangelist. And, and I've done that, and I've led people to Christ. But, but Pastor Zeph... Um, he actually has the gift of evangelism. You know, I'll, I'll see him stop at a gas station and he's getting gas. Yes. And the next thing I know, he's talking to the guy next to him and he's talking to him about Jesus and he's leading this guy in a sinner's prayer. That's the gift of evangelism. Um, exhortation, which is a little bit uh, different than, than teaching. Um, that, that's where... Um, teaching your, your goal is that somebody learns a subject. Exhortation is, is in the sense of you don't only want them to learn this. You want them to apply this and to, to change their life. And so this is a gift. This is a passion that, that God puts in you. Uh, faith, giving. Uh, again, Pastor Zeph, he's got the, the gift of giving. Um, go go through that list, and really, what I'd, I'd like you to do is find out what what are your top four and five gifts, and then go through and, and look and, and and we've listed areas. So if if you have the gift of helps, well, you, you you'd be great at the welcome table, you'd be great um, hospitality table. You serve coffee, um, help with communion. There's so all kinds of things on there. You know, if if you get knowledge. Um, we, we want somebody that's going to pray for people. We want them to have knowledge to, to understand how, how should I pray for this person? Uh, if you have the gift of leadership, um, that's where you may, may be on the, on the leadership team or, or a group leader or teacher, any of those things. Uh, missionary, uh, pastor shepherd here, here's an interesting one. Cause, uh, Earlier last year, we did this test, and and there were people that in our group scored higher than I did, and, and Pastor Shepherd, and and they're not necessarily teachers or or anything like that. But but listen, what it says here: it says the gift of Pastor Shepherd is the divine strength or ability to care for the personal needs of others by nurturing and mending life issues. So a lot of times this is, this is the person that you hear somebody's story and you are moved to compassion and, you, and your thought is, how can I help this person? How, how can we make a difference? And you like to come alongside them um, and, and help them and walk them through something. Uh, so, so you may not be a, you can have pastor shepherd and not be a preacher. Uh, so, so let, don't, don't confuse those. Um, and, and you may get this and you go, wow, I, I never thought about that. But the people that I've seen had that, I go, yeah, that makes sense because you're a very caring person. You're, you're very concerned with the needs of others. Um, and so, so we have this whole list here and we go through and, and again, let me ask you the question, which gift is most important? Well, they're all important. We, we need that. We, we need people with the gift of hospitality. We need people with the gift of helps, the gift of giving. Um, we need administrators. 
I, I think in, in big pictures, okay? Um, I don't have the, the gift of administration. My, my wife does, and, and she's very good at details. And so, so we need those, those detail people. We need the, the big picture people. Uh, we, we, need, we need all of the gifts. Okay, so take that, and discuss, it, discuss it with some others, walk through, and, um, you know, and, and just ask yourself, okay, does this line up? Does this, does this sound like me? And then how can I take those gifts and how can I now serve? Um, so your next steps, attend step three, uh, we combine three and four. So attend step three of, of growth track, uh, pray that God will strengthen you and, and grow you and, and your gifts and, and the passion that he has, he has put into you. And um, look forward to seeing you in, in step three and, and step four. So let, let me pray. Heavenly Father, um, thank you, Lord. Thank you that you have gifted us each uniquely. Pray that we would use um, the gifts that you have given us for, for your grace and for your glory. And um, we love you. We praise you. And, and thank you that, that you have put us together in a body and that, um, that it's together we glorify you. We love you, Lord, and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.